Hello, my name's Paul Neighbour, and Adobe have updated the way Adobe Connect works. So this is a brief update for 2021 on how Adobe Connect now works. Um, so what you'll get is an email like this, uh, or an invitation, an Outlook invitation. What you're looking for is this meet 5625999, whatever number, with a, a unique code at the end. So you click on that code. Now that's going to take you to a page that uh, looks a little bit like this one that's just opening now. And because I've got the app, it's actually gonna open the app straight away. But we're just gonna close that app down for now. And I'm just gonna take you back to that original opening page. So what you'll see is a page that looks like this. And it gives you two options. You can either um, open in the Adobe Connect app, or you can continue with your browser. Now, Adobe strongly recommend, and, and I agree, um, that it's much better to use the app. So in order to store the app, you need to click on this download link here. Now, uh, some organizations block downloading and installing apps, but quite a lot of them will whitelist um, certain apps that they've approved, pre-approved. So they may have approved Adobe Connect um, as part of their due diligence so for instance we've got quite high security on our systems but but the adobe connect app is one of those that you can download and run so it'll appear in your download bit here so once it's downloaded you click run and install that app so i'm just reinstalling it because i already have it installed so if that doesn't work i will in a minute show you how to use the the web version um which is okay, but uh, it's not, so that's downloading. Which is okay, but it's not quite as robust and you can't do things like sharing your desktop um, and things like that, which is where, why some organizations may prevent you from uh, downloading the app because they may not want you to uh, be able to share your desktop. So this is just installed. I'm just waffling now, actually, while this installs. Right, so that's installed, and you can create a shortcut on your desktop, um, but you don't have to. So uh, let's go back to that meeting invite that um, that we just had open a minute ago, this one here. So now, if you click this, you should find that it opens up that web page, the one that we we're just looking at. Um, and we'll come back to that in a minute in your browser but then it will automatically open up that meeting room in the uh, app so you can tell that you've got the app because you get this green square down here and it says preparing room it will set up the room for you now there's one thing if you've got a VPN connection to your custom to your client um, to your servers then I recommend you turn off that VPN connection. So here there's some sort of basic instructions, but you can close those down. So the key thing is how do we get the sound going? So how can we hear you? Now I strongly recommend using one of these uh, USB headsets like this. So you can put that on and, um, <clears throat> and that stops feedback. So that's a much better way of doing it. Um, so how do you set up your sound? Basically, you go to this top three dots in the top right corner and you run through this quick microphone setup. So first of all, you test your speakers. So we should be able to hear that fantastic music. Uh, and then press next. And then here you can select which microphone you have. So I've got a microphone in my webcam and I've got a microphone that I'm using here. So uh, I'm just gonna use this microphone here. And then you can test your microphone by saying something like Mary had little lambs, fleece as white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And then you can play that back. And by saying something like Mary had little lambs, fleece as white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. So that should sound fairly decent. And then you have to test the silence level. So what the silence level is, it's a trigger. When you start talking, it switches on your mic. So it sort of takes out that background level. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute while I press this button so that just takes a sample of the noise in your room and as you see mine's like really low one and um, uh, so that'll mean that you won't be jumping in all the times with the mics and press done and now your sounds working so if you turn on your microphone it's this button here so that'll turn that microphone on 
and off. Um, so the usual convention is it's sort of like when you want to talk, you um, you press the microphone on, and you can raise your hand actually, and we can enable your microphone remotely. And then here's a webcam. So if you want to share your webcam, it is really really nice if you can uh, start your webcam. So here, and I think you can choose which webcam. No, actually, uh, I've only got one webcam enabled. So. Uh, basically here you can choose which webcam you choose so you switch on your webcam here now it's quite interesting a lot, a lot of people think well I've turned it on but it's not actually uh, working and I, I doubt this will work actually because we're using my webcam at the moment to record this but if you press start sharing it'll then share that webcam so that's how to use the app and if you can download the app I strongly recommend that you do um, because it's more stable and it just seems to work a lot better i think that's what the adobe advice is if you can't use a webcam then you can access it through a browser so you just click this button here this link here it'll tend to remember these um choices and you may get a slightly different menu now the browser is um not quite as good how do you tell you've got the browser you haven't got the square box at the bottom and also you have the address bar at the top but apart from that you can see the layout is almost identically the same so again uh, the three dots are up here come on there it is so again it's exactly the the same setup here next uh i'll try me uh webcam you can see how awful it is hello can you hear me this is using the webcam microphone see that's why uh it's worth having a proper headset because it just sounds awful doesn't it if you use if you use the built-in microphone on your computer or your webcam it's just awful i'm going to check the sound levels done so that's that done uh, a couple of other little things there's a button uh, a sort of like indicator here that shows how good your internet connection is and how much data we're using so as you can see adobe is really good it doesn't really use much data at all that's because uh, we're not sharing my screen the, the 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 data the slides have actually shared on the adobe server uh, so i'm not uploading so that's one of the key features of adobe is it's more efficient in terms of use um what's this button do don't know if you if the slides are too small for you you can full screen like that uh back to full screen like that uh chat's usually down here uh you're all down here so this should show whether you're speaking or or not as the case may be so if i turn on my microphone you'll see that so now my microphone's connected you should see yeah so you can see my the little icon there's going up and down uh, if you're stuck you can raise your hand here and that enables me to turn on your mic remotely so that's Adobe Connect it's pretty much the same as them all they're all the same really um, the key advantage is that we're not uh, sharing desktops we're sort of streaming content from uh, Adobe server which makes it much more bandwidth less bandwidth hungry okay I hope you found that useful and uh, I'll see you soon